The top stories. A mother talks about her son's serious injury in school violence. Michael's soaring ice cream sales put it into profit for the first time in three years. And the fallout continues from the ousting of St. Lucia's opposition leader. Welcome to Nation News for Thursday, January the 23rd, 2014. I'm Bertram Alice. You want your loved ones around to celebrate, especially those living far. And with Digicel Top Up, Dad can help you bring life to the party and be part of the celebration. Ask him to send you Digicel Minutes. Receive free instant additional credit. Stay connected here and there. Ask your family abroad to send Digicel Minutes today. We start with a sad case of school ground violence and a parent's sorrow. Harriet Holligan, the mother of four, received a call from her son's secondary school in St. Michael last week, Tuesday, to notify her that he had been injured and she needed to get to the school right away. When she got there, she saw her 14-year-old lying on the ground unconscious. From the time I get this phone call, mm -hmm. I felt bad. Mm -hmm. Because I know my son leave home in good condition. Then after I get the phone call, come to school and see your, and see your son, I start to feel bad. When I get to the hall door, I saw my son flat on the ground. I holler and faint. He put me in remembrance of when his father passed away. I went and saw him on the bed, they laying down. Mm -hmm. So I felt real bad and distressed. A 15-year-old schoolmate has been charged with causing serious bodily harm in the case and was remanded to the government industrial school when he appeared in court on Monday. We are eating more ice cream and boy, Baiko is happy. The company has just announced its first profit since 2010 in the sum of $374,000 for the financial year ending September 30th last year. Ice cream sales rose by 6%. The company's cold storage facility bettered that with the trend continuing during the first two months of the current financial year. We can't complain because we have actually had quite a good year despite everything, but it's not easy. Um, you may have noticed that we're almost doing handstands and cartwheels um, to make sure that if there's any business out there, we are getting it. And it's very clear, all of our people know we're in a situation where it's every man for himself. <laughs> in more business news, the luxury property market in Barbados is showing real signs of recovery, according to a London estate agent and global property consultancy. Knight Frank reports that 2013 saw a marked turnaround in the market as confidence levels amongst buyers from Europe and the US picked up. Sales volumes increased by 15% year on year, with prices starting to stabilize following several years of declining values. However, the company cautions that supply continues to outpace demand, but the Barbados market is rebalancing. Minister of Labour Esther Bayasuku has rejected any suggestion that Beijing should take to the streets to protest against the coming public sector job losses. Dr. Bayasuku said Barbados was not a society that resorted to burning tires and breaking windows. She praised the unions for their contributions to talks on the layoffs, which might be fewer than the 3,000 most frequently mentioned. I, I, I do not agree with those persons who have been saying that the trade unions have let down the workers. I've been sitting in the room with the trade unions. They have not let down the workers. They put everything on the table. They went all out to make sure that we could do whatever to save jobs. You know, and they have been they were very good at it. At the end of the day, we have to make as government the decisions that, that are in the best interest of the whole country. And um, if that means that a, that a few jobs are lost, I am hopeful that ultimately when that happens, when if, if some jobs are lost initially, we would see an improvement in the economy, we would see an improvement in, in, in the confidence, we would see a return of all those things that we need so that we can have more jobs in place ultimately, maybe not in government alone, but more jobs in place in the private sector. A second government senator has come out against the legalization of marijuana in Barbados. Senator Andrea Wiles position mirrors that of Senator David Durant, who made his views known on Monday. Speaking at a drug awareness exhibition at the National Library this morning, Senator Wiles acknowledged the medicinal benefits of some strains of marijuana, but he said its widespread acceptance could lead to increased drug abuse, with no real economic benefit from blanket legalization. The question we must ask, is it worth the risk? At the end of the day, 
Marijuana is still a dangerous drug which can have a harmful effect on the body. I would say that an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. As I have said before and say to all young persons contemplating using drugs, don't start something which you can't finish. At Courts, every day we bring affordability, convenience, innovation, and style to over 1 million customers in 11 countries. From homes to communities, we are proud to make a difference in the lives of many across the region. Courts, bringing value home. Prime Minister Frandil Stewart has been appointed to the Queen's Privy Council, which means he can now be addressed as the Right Honourable. The Privy Council, which has limited legislative functions, no longer has the power of old, though its judicial arm remains the highest court for several Caribbean nations. Former Prime Ministers Sir Lloyd Sandiford and Owen Arthur are also members. To our neighbours now in St. Lucia, former Prime Minister Stevenson King says he feels betrayed by the decision of parliamentary colleagues to oust him as opposition leader. He is being replaced by Gail Rigobert after months of infighting in the opposition United Workers' Party. Mr. King has received support from Michael Flood, a party member for 45 years. He called the change shameful. He doesn't have to be, and I am not going to say that he should be or must remain leader of the opposition, but I'm saying treat the man with reverence. The man have served his time, the man have served his country, the man have served his party. He led the charge after the 20, 20, 1997 defeat. He led the charge. When we didn't have an office or, or our office had no electricity, two o'clock in the morning you'd pass with a candle, he was, he, he was upstairs in Napa's building. Treat the man with respect. Jamaica's police commissioner, Owen Ellington, has ordered the transfer of all police who were involved in the fatal shooting of a man in downtown Kingston on Monday. Mr. Ellington issued the instruction during a high-level security meeting that was prompted by two days of demonstrations by residents from the community of Orange Villa, who claimed that a 27-year-old man was killed in cold blood by the police. The residents mounted fiery roadblocks on Monday and Tuesday to voice their disgust at the killing. And finally, a fugitive sex offender in England phoned police while on the run to complain that a local newspaper had wrongly reported his crime. Oh, yes. James Denham, who is 33, absconded from court a year ago after pleading guilty to intentionally causing or exciting a girl aged 14 to engage in sexual activity. However, information put out to the media in good faith claimed Denham had pleaded guilty to having sex with an underage girl. The landscape gardener saw his story in a local newspaper and phoned police to complain that he had been accused of the wrong offense. He's still at large. And that's Nation News. I'm Bertrand Lance.